No, tell my wife she can wait. <clears throat> I'm Jim Jensen with Desert Idiot News. We're here live tonight with some breaking news where there is a man working on a Ford. Why are you such a piece of I hate you! Absolutely terrifying. Are we clear? Yeah, get me out of here, this place is a dump. Welcome back to Veteran Idiot. I'm Art. This is Earl. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, last time you saw Earl, we had just finished up the bed. And today we're going to move on with our conquest to get this thing ready to... Uh, ready to hit those car shows and uh, maybe the hot rod power tour, all that stuff. And so the thing that we got to get done today is we're going to lower it a little bit. We got some of these uh, Amazon Special Belltech knockoffs, 6400 series um, shackles that we're going to throw on. We can't see if we can't lower this thing down about an inch or so on the back. Uh, before we do so, I just want to thank all of you who went out and ordered my merchandise from the brand new website. Uh, opened up the website with all the new merchandise over the last week, and it's been a absolutely humbling turnout i cannot even bring to words the amount of appreciation i have for you guys and those who uh went out and bought some merchandise from me you guys are amazing i never in a million years thought that i would see myself here doing these things and doing what i love for fun and giving entertainment to you guys and getting paid for it it's absolutely amazing. Thank you guys for supporting my small business. I absolutely appreciate all of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you for checking out the website and ordering stuff. And if you haven't checked it out, www.veteranidiot. Probably goes this way, but it's www.veteranidiot, any way you look at it, uh, .com. On Facebook, Instagram, all that business. Uh, Pinterest doesn't like me very much. I think they... Uh, frown on the word idiot in the title and so they've banned me from selling stuff on there gonna look into that a little bit a little unfortunate i think context uh should be considered but anyways let's go ahead and start tearing this thing down this should be a very very simple swap so let's go ahead and get started and tear this thing apart first thing we need to do is jack it up Put it on stands on the frame and then we'll start undoing these bolts over here which i have not soaked in any type of uh break free or any wd-40 or anything like that so this should be um come off easy with no issues at all but let's go ahead and support this frame so we can lower the axle take off the shackles and put these bad dogs on bolt it back up and be done so one thing we're looking at here is that there's a bit of a rake. It's kind of hard to tell with the camera, but we'll use this level to give you an idea of what we're looking at. But I'm just trying to get that rake down a little bit. I still, like I said, I still use this thing to haul hay everywhere I go and uh, all kinds of other stuff, engines and everything else. So I still need some support, but I've got like 45 inches of travel between the actual axle and the frame rail. So I think we're gonna be good. Plus the shocks have plenty of travel as well. We're just taking about an inch and a half, two inches out of the back level it down so let's see what we got here so if i go to the front of the bed here put this level on and bring it down until the bubble is in the middle see we're about an inch two inches down as the further you get back so that's kind of what we were looking at this is not an exact measurement but this just gives you guys an idea of how much rake we're dealing with the actual drop will be determined uh, by how much wheel well we get rid of with there's there's not really wheel well with a uh, flatbed but you get what I'm saying stop nitpicking what I'm trying to tell you I'm sorry that was uncalled for What is it? Come on. These things are just like skateboards anytime you get a little rock in there. They don't want to go any further. There we go. Now we're good. 
All right. So right now, from the ground up to the bottom of the flatbed is about 37 and a quarter inches. It's our base measurement. Let's see what we get when we start pulling all this apart and we'll compare it to what we got at the end. One of the other things that we got to do with this truck is it's got 456 gears. In. That is not conducive of highway speeds with a C6 and a big block. So we need to swap that out with some highway gears. Like I think the lowest that I could find was uh, 350s, something and others. Um, there are 308s that come in specific axles that came in specific vehicles, but tracking it down is just really not worth my time. Plus this thing will be an absolute turd pulling off of green lights and anything at all. It won't be able to spin these tires in the slightest. Uh, so we want to get something a little bit, little bit in between. And so I think the 350, whichever is the factory uh, size will be good for this. And then I'll get us out on the road so we can cruise and we don't put too much stress on this engine. Just trying to keep up with tra traffic and not getting run over. Uh, let's get this high enough. So if it falls, it'll create plenty of damage. All right, so although I did not need to, well, let me forget to tighten that before we finish this up. So although I did not need to take the wheels and tires off, I took them off because I wanted to go ahead and go adjust the, uh, the brake drums. It felt a little sloppy in the pedal, so they were pretty out of adjustment. So we adjusted those and now we're ready to start messing with this. So this is the shackle. In the back here, you can see it's about four or five inches. These ones are significantly taller, but it's going to give us that adjustment. We'll probably go to this first hole, set it down, see what it looks like. And then if I want it to come down a little bit more to get it level, we'll go to the second hole on top. But uh, provided there's enough room here in this space to hit that first hole, we should be all right. We can flip it around this way as well. Doesn't really matter which direction they go. Most of the time, I think the instructions say they prefer the H to face to the back or the U to face to the back. But uh, for these guys, we can put them either direction. We'll be all right. Let's go ahead and get these loosened up. I got the axle supported. It's pushing up some of the weight so we can take these off and should be able to jimmy the jack up and down to get the bolts out and slide those shackles out. I'm gonna give them a little squirt just for funsies. Sometimes they like to rust down inside that sleeve and if it does, it's not good. Energy suspension bushings does have sleeves and bushings for these springs though. So you can burn them out, push them out, whatever you wanna do with them, press them out and then put the new bushings in, you'll be good to go. It just adds a lot of time to it. So we're praying that it's like everything else on this truck and just comes apart with no issues at all. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. All right, cover yours. Oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. It's beautiful. Why are these bigger than those? Why? Why? What does it need to be bigger for? <sighs> Fine. So something to consider, much like most vehicles, the top bolt comes in from the frame side. So you got to kind of either get it up or out around drop down past this to get the bolt out i think we'll have enough room to get it up maybe maybe enough room we'll see well i probably have to undo the other side and then push the axle all the way up so it clears up in here to get the bolt out but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it earmuffs and there she is yeah, we're gonna have to do some finagling with the axle, try and get it up enough to get that out. All right, let's undo the other side.
All right, so like I said, we disconnected from here and did the same on the other side and was able to jack the axle all the way up to the frame rail. It's kind of hard to see, but all the way up. See how much room I still have on the bump stop there? And you can really get low with these trucks, but we're not gonna mess with that. And now we're above the frame rail up here, and so we'll just slide this bolt right out. And then this shackle is out. Then we're gonna toss the other one in, put the bolt back in the same direction. Encountered a little snafu here. Looks like I'm gonna have to drill these out. This bolt's just a little bit bigger. Let's make sure everything fits correctly before we start going down that road. Okay, so I drilled out these bottom holes. Remember, we're gonna try the bottom ones first and then we'll go up to the tops. Um, and I had to do a little finagling to get this in the bottom of the seat down here. These weren't really meant for this truck. There's not really any out there for this year truck or this concept. So got them in here. Now what we gotta do is uh, lower down the axle, we'll slide in the bolt and then we'll set it down on the ground and see that's where we wanna be before putting all this back together. We're going down, down, baby, up street in a Range Rover, sweet sweeper, baby. Hot, ready to let it go. Come on down, just a little bit more. Oh, oh, too far, too far. Come on up. Come back up. There we go. Get on up there. Get on out. Get on. Oh, there she goes. All right. Looks like that bolt's going to clear on the other side, so we probably don't have to put it back through this direction. Should be all right. Other side. Breeze is nice. Up the shorts on the giblets. Forgot to warn you on the sound on that one, guys. Sorry. Jack it up. Take the stands out. Lower it down. See where we're at. Going down. All right. Let's measure it up. already looks better but I think we're gonna actually have to go to the other hole give it a little bit more down we were 37 and a quarter before we are now 36 and a quarter let's see what the level looks like well folks I say we take it to the top hole get it low low Oh yeah, this is looking good. 
This is promising, like the way it looks already. Let's see, should be another inch. Started out with 37 and a quarter. We are at 37 and a half. So we got about an inch and three quarter drop, which is not bad at all. I didn't really want to go much further. One thing I forgot to point out to you guys before doing all of this is that there is a very good chance it's going to mess up your pinning angle and you may develop a vibration or something like that. If that's the case, you got to go get shims and uh, place them under the um, spring perches and get that pinion nail corrected. So what it's going to do is as you are um, raising the shackles, it's tilting the pinion forward. So it's swinging the whole thing up, tilting the pinion down and forward. So if uh, your transmission isn't pointed up towards the floor of the truck, then it being pointed down here is going to cause you some vibration. So there's a good chance your transmission's pointed down a little bit. You want your pinion to be the opposite angle, but match this. So if there's a two degree drop here, you want a two degree incline here on the pinion to keep it from vibrating. This is quite a bit of a tilt, so there's a good chance I'm going to have lots of vibration. I'm going to have to go get some shims. I think the largest I saw were three degree, which I mean should get us in the ballpark. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with the way this looks. Let's get the level on it. There we are. It's about an inch About an inch still of a rake just from here to there. I don't know from the front to back, but Already looking at it from the side. It looks a ton better. So we're gonna leave it like that Obviously, we don't have any more adjustment that we can get out of it and I don't want to get different springs I don't want to get a shackle kit. I don't want to get a flip kit. Like I said, I still use this truck I still want to use it for everything that I need so we'll leave it just like this. Now, one thing to remember, since these are uh, rubberized bushings and they are molded in there, you need to wait till the weight of the vehicle is down on the ground and the suspension is loaded to tighten those up. Otherwise, you're gonna prematurely wear those bushings out, slip them out of the sleeves. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up, take it for a drive, see what our uh, vibration looks like and enjoy the new stance. One guy in the back there screaming at me, making sure I don't forget this U-bolt. I didn't forget. All right, so I think that's why it's not tight. It doesn't move. Okay, well, uh, looks good. Good to go. I absolutely love this truck. Every time I drive it, it just solidifies how much of an enjoyable vehicle this is. Just when I thought it couldn't get any better of a drive, it's better. No driveline vibration at all. It seems to be smoother. I don't know. It's Maybe it's just a longer travel on the shackles. That's kind of like an old off-road trick. Um, but with this truck, it's, it's just great. I don't even know what to say other than I am so glad that I did these shackles. I kind of tossed it around for a long time and then uh, gave in and finally did it. But it's a simple, simple, easy thing to do to your truck to get it a little bit lower. Don't have to go through all the business of everything else. But it's, it, like I said, it's only going to drop it like an inch and a half, two at the most. But for this truck, it was just enough. The stance is beautiful. Sorry about the contrast from the blazing ball of molten magma in the distance. But on this hill, it makes it look a little low in the back, but it is level as can be. And I couldn't be happier. Well, that's enough of me gushing over this truck. 
There's still a lot to be done before we can get it ready for a power tour, so make sure you stay tuned for all those episodes. We'll get some gears ordered up so we can dive right into that. Need some lap belts too. Probably go with some uh, crow padded racing harnesses throw in there and we'll figure out maybe I can do shoulder belts somehow, maybe reinforce the uh, cab, throw them in there. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It needs some belts. That's all I know. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out all the merchandise and veteranidiot.com. And uh, this is the actual Stars and Stripes C10 shirt that you'll find on the website, but this is the OG one from the very beginning. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and always have fun. Ooh, girl!